Okay, bye, Michael. Alison is back from applying to the local magistrates for a license to take over the running of the village pub. Her future and the pub's is in the balance. No wonder they're pleased. Without the licence, the pub would have closed and Alison would have had to leave the village. So you won't be moving out today? I won't be moving out today. I've got somewhere to sleep tonight. <laughs> so it's party night in here tonight. I'm to celebrate. You look relieved. I feel relieved. I need a drink. <laughs> I need a drink. In fact, her problems aren't over. She's only got a week or two to prove to the owner she's up to the job. Cheers. Here's to the future. Thank you. Cheers. The future. The future. Say, over my shoulder goes one pair. Over my shoulder goes two pairs. Why should I cry to above? I'm free at last. In the last few weeks, there's been a rather tense atmosphere on the farm. Brian and his friend Paul, who've been working as farmhands side by side for 15 years, haven't been talking for days and neither man looks like giving way. I'm as stubborn as a mule. Yeah. And uh, quite frankly, I, as far as I'm concerned, we never did anything wrong. And we just went by the rules. And, and quite honestly, I'm not going to apologise for something I haven't done. It's frankly like that. That's just the uh, start and the end of it. The rift centres around the council's sudden decision to allocate one of the new houses on the Babs Field estate to Brian's daughter Debbie, who's been officially homeless for nearly a year. She's been told that quite unexpectedly she's now been given priority over the other family at the top of the list. But, um, the other people that were offered the house were Helen Parrott and her boyfriend and son and um, Helen's dad works with my dad and it's caused quite a bit of bad feeling between the families. In fact, you and Helen were close friends and went to school together. We were friends, yeah. Not really close. We did go to the same school, but yeah. We and families have known each other for years. Does Helen blame you for what's happened? Partly, I think, yeah. The council have made it quite clear that it was their fault, you know, it was their problem and everything, but whether these, their family will accept that or not, I don't know. There are people up there that would rather I didn't take the house, but um, we've decided not to give in to it. Our happiness and Joe's happiness is more important than anybody else. Do you think there's been a, a deliberate attempt by some of the villagers to put you off? Yeah, you? yeah, very deliberate. An unusual visitor up at the village police house. It's a domestic crisis. Well, the problem is, is when we run the tap, um, flush the toilet, there's a noise coming from them. And the only way to stop it is to actually turn the stopcock um, yeah. underneath the sink. There's also a slight leak on the stopcock, so I don't know whether that's... PC Pinky Salmon's waterworks have been playing up, so he's called in a local plumber, Dave Hurrell. I'll have a look, see what we can find. See what we can find. Let's have a look. Mm. Pinky and his wife Debs haven't lived here long enough to have heard that Dave is a plumber with a rather unusual past. All right, have you always been doing that, have you? No, no, I, I did a bit of uh, other things. I, I, I sang for a little while, you know. Yeah. With, yeah, rock and roll music back in the 50s and 60s. 50s and 60s, yeah. so, all right, well before I'm afraid I was, uh, yeah. I was even thought of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, not to make you feel bad. <laughs> I feel a bit old now. <laughs> Are you still doing the singing now? Well, I want to I want to start and do it again sometime, you know, because um, I I love Elvis Presley, you know, and I love doing his music. His is the best. I was about to say when you came in the door, I thought well, it looks a little bit like Elvis actually. Oh, thanks very much. It must be you see the hair, you it's see. It's the hairstyle. It's yeah, there. Well, even the face a little bit. Oh, right. 
Yeah. He's just missing the glitter suit, really. What, the old? <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to change your overall. It would be a bit difficult to come with I the old plumber, wouldn't you, in the old, uh, here, in the old suit? Right, I think that's fixed that. Right, good. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about doing a, you know, a show locally with him. Yeah. But Elvis, yeah, do it for charity or something like that, you know, and... Uh, after exchanging his guitar and winkle pickers for a spanner and bucket 20 years ago, Dave's planning a showbiz comeback. Do you regret giving it up? Well, you always get that regret, don't you? You always like to live in the past, don't you, really? I, I think I do regret it now because um, the girl that I gave it all up for to start a family and all that, you know, and... She divorced me a few years later and ran off with another bloke, so yeah, I do regret it a bit, I suppose. <laughs> Who knows? Were you known as Dave Harrell? No, no, no. Dale Fontaine. So yeah. that could have been up there with Elvis. It, well, I wouldn't have been with Elvis. I wouldn't have been good enough to do that. No. I could have been with Cliff, I suspect. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> How um, close did you get to it, do you think? Very close, I think. Very close. Very, very close. Why did you say that? Tell me about it. Well, I've, I've played with a lot of the top stars and and I think the girls used to scream just as much for me as they did them. So, yeah, I think I, I nearly made it. Why didn't you then? I don't know. Just didn't have enough confidence. Too much wind, I expect. <laughs> <laughs> you suffer from wind, do you? you? certainly do when I get nervous, yeah. Yeah, here we go again. You're not nervous now, are you? No, I'm not. You're all right. I'll get arrested. Yeah. Right. <laughs> get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Paul has taken time off from the farm to demand an explanation from the council about why his daughter didn't get the Babs Field house. She's officially homeless too, and is also in temporary accommodation. I didn't think it was very fair the way it was, you know, handled, people involved. Uh, so I just went down there and just told them that I wasn't very happy with the situation, and one thing led to another. Got a bit of heat. What did, what did you say to the council? Well, I just wanted to know how they could just give someone else in writing one day and then over a weekend take it off of them as though they'd never offered to them in the first place. And they said, well, they don't have to explain to me why. And I said, you do have to explain. You can't just do it. He said, well, you know, legally, we can do it legally, but morally it's wrong. I said, well, it's wrong anyway, because, you know, you just don't carry on like that in life. It devastates people's lives. It's, it ruins... It was partly ruined a friendship I had with Brian, which has been going on for a long time. Uh, it hadn't just sort of ruined Ellen's life and upset them, it's, it's upset a lot of other people as well. It's made bad feelings all round, really. Has it ruined that friendship with Brian? Well, I don't know, really. I hope not, but we can just, you know... I went to work the other day and tried to speak to him, and all I got was a, a bit of a grunt, really, but... I don't know, really. Maybe you'll get over it, I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting the dog in. Hi. Hello, hello, Terry. Hello, Denise. Dave, the plumber's first step back on the road to stardom is to enlist the help of his friend Tell, the landlord of the pub at the other end of the parish, the Cedars. A bit quiet at the moment. But... Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, well, I might be able to do you a favour then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I want to do this Elvis show of mine, you know? The fact that Dave hasn't got a backing group doesn't worry him at all. All he needs now is to convince Tell that this is the right venue. I thought maybe we could do the old Elvis show over there. What I do is the exact show, or more or less the exact show that Elvis used to do. And we use, so you haven't got to worry about a band, because we use backing tracks that I get all the way from America. Oh, right. And we do, we do the show, you know, with all the gear. And yeah, you'd love to, Dave. Yeah? yeah. So, uh, Have you got anything in mind? Any sort well, of Well, I haven't got date fixed up yet, but we can sort of... Friday night's probably the best, isn't it? Time. Friday night? Yeah, yeah, on a fine, Friday yeah. night, yeah. If that's all right with you, Terry. What do you think of all this, Terry? Is this the kind of thing that would go down well here? Oh, I think it definitely would, yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, well, we can only give it a try. Full, True. Full of punters in. Hey, yeah. You're put, advertising. Put it in all the variety magazines and... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the parish mag. Why not? 
Down in the pub in the centre of the village, business is the best it's been for weeks. Alison's on the crest of a wave. Everyone's turned out to congratulate the saviour of the star. Glad to see you in here anyway. Alison, on behalf of everybody, just hope that everything goes goes really well. Thank you. Keeping up our money. You're bored. Not again. Thank you. With the battle to stay open only just beginning, this is at least one moment for celebration. What do you think of that? Well impressed, well impressed, gutted. <laughs> shaking again. Still shaking? Yes. You've done a lot of that recently. I have. Not enough alcohol, that's what it is. No, it's, it's yeah, it's gutted. It's been very busy tonight, it's been very good tonight. Made a few mistakes in the kitchen. What? Well, <laughs> sent starters out twice the same table. <laughs> But never mind. How long have you got now before that final decision on your future is made? About two weeks. Two weeks to build it up, make it work. In years to come, today will be regarded as one of the momentous days in the history of the village. And, as usual, Tony Holmes is late. Star car park, there's never been so many green wellies. But without the chairman of the parish council, Tony Holmes, nothing can proceed. Even Her Worship, the Lady Mayor, has to kill time. How do you do? Yes, you're doing business. That's right. Yes. And we're meeting Thank again you. tomorrow, I gather. Oh, Peter's going. Yes. yes. Busy inside the star too. This is Alison's first real test, and she's already behind schedule. Tony's here at last and tries hard to make amends with ingratiating social chit chat, even though he did leave his tie in the cow shed. And you were up that end of the village? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I came and so. uh, warmed up mm. in the pub. Mm. Mm. So we're going to start digging him, aren't we? Well, he, They're walking Yes, down. we are. We're yeah. on our way up. Marching along together, singing all along the line. They're late already, and the Lady Mayor clearly wants to get cracking. We'll be there in rain <laughs> well, or shine, <laughs> ready for war or kill. She looks calm enough, but in less than half an hour, Alison and her mum's army of helpers have to serve up lunch for the 37 local dignitaries. And as the minutes tick by, her nerves really being tested. Good morning, everybody. In particular, good morning to the, the chairman of the, par of the parish council and the chairman of the district council, and also to, to all assembled guests. I'd like to welcome you to this ceremony this morning, which actually marks the start, the official start of the Bentley Bypass Works. Now, I know that this bypass has been long awaited by the people of Bentley, and I'm sure it will be bring a welcome relief, both from through traffic and the noise and vibration that comes with it. It could be a very long morning. It involves the construction of 2.8 kilometres of dual carriageway. And when I've got these notes, I meant to ask somebody what that means in English, so perhaps Steve Rowlands can, can tell us in a minute. Down on the Babs Field estate, the first of the new houses is at last complete. 
Mr Kettle from the Housing Association is there to hand over the keys to the lucky family. It's the day Debbie's been dreaming of for months. Debbie's husband can't afford the day off work, so mother-in-law stepped in as chauffeur. Little Jarrah have plenty of room to play, won't he? Yeah. He'll have his nice little garden. Have you got much of a garden? I don't know, I haven't had a look, had, had a oh. chance to have a look really. I haven't been yeah. over there, so. So you've no idea at all how big it is or anything? No, no idea at all. Today will be the first time that I've had a good look round. Excited? Yeah, very excited, yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait for the weekend to get here to move in. Vroom, vroom, yeah. Probably get told off in a minute for being late. Not half. Mr Kettle's nearly boiling. I went to the doctor and said, have you got anything for win? And he gave me a kite. <laughs> <laughs> At the Cedars, Tell's been completely won over. The countdown to Dave's big night has begun. You'll get the whole audience then? Yeah. yeah. They'll be able to read the menu. But... <laughs> Excuse me, can you move out of the way? I want to read the menu. <laughs> Debbie's finally arrived. Not that everyone's delighted to see her. At least Mr Kettle seems to have simmered down. And whilst work to complete the other houses continues, the local press have turned out to record the happy occasion that Debbie's waited so long for. Really, you have a photo of you receiving the keys. Can you come on a bit further forward? Right. Okay. Okay. There she goes. She hand them over and, and hold them ready. That's right. Okay. A bit happy about it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well and truly pleased. No. <laughs> right. Okay. Thanks for watching, Thank you. Right. Okay. Right. Here we right. go. Indoors. Come along. Oh, here we are. Oh, oh this is nice, this isn't it? Oh, shit. Right? Hey. Hey. Is oh, 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 look at this, Jack. This is nice, eh? Oh, look at this. Yeah. Look at the cookies. It's a real revelation. The kitchen alone is almost as big as the entire flat they're coming from. Spacious fridge. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Um, Come on, my room going. Is this it? What are you hoping to move in then? Just Hopefully, uh, over the over. weekend, we'll right. be able to right. yeah, okay. get in. Yeah. What do you think, Debbie? It's brilliant. It's really lovely. It's more, it's actually, it's better than I expected, you know. I expected to be painting the banisters myself and stuff like that, but no, it's really nice. Really nice. Yeah. What about the space? Brilliant. <laughs> As you can see, Joe's enjoying himself, running about all over the place like a mad thing. Is it going to be difficult to adjust, do you think, to all the space? Yeah, it will be for a while, I expect. Yeah. Get used to having things spread about rather than where you can reach them. But, yeah, it's brilliant. Super brilliant. You can have a decent row now. Yeah, yes, yes, and I can stay down here and he can go up to his bedroom like a naughty boy. <laughs> That'll be real luxury, right? Yeah. Well, in this way, not downstairs. In this one. You'll be able to watch all the neighbours, Joe, won't you? <laughs> Sit up on here and watch all the neighbours through their windows. Yeah, you want to have a look? At the back of Debbie's mind, though, there's still a nagging doubt about how she and her family will be received by the new neighbours. They are busy, aren't they? Just around the corner, and Paul Blackman's as bitter as ever. Always got on well, and that's what I'm saying. See, the, 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 count, the, the council concerned of of course a lot of bad feelings all round. I mean they even said to me that they didn't like to do it but the only possible outcome was to, and I will sit here and say this, that we could take the house back off of Debbie, which again it, they can do, and I said we don't want that. I said that won't solve nothing because all that would happen then is Brian would go down there and do the same as I did and you'd just be one vicious circle. I said all we want is a letter of apology from the people concerned plus and else that she was given in the first place, it was took away. To complete a civil engineering contract is always a happy occasion for a contractor. To start one, however, is even better.
The ceremony to inaugurate work on the new bypass is taking far longer than anyone imagined. Tony's attention span, never long anyway at these occasions, is broken by the glint of silver. He's wondering if he'll be asked to cut the first sod. The sods have got away. At least it gives Alison a breathing space. Right, they inform me that I can't have a beer order. Can you tell me wine, please? She seems under attack on almost every front. Ah, oh, well, for once, Tony's had to take a back seat. Although he does make sure he's in for the pictures. Good. With only days to go before Dave's Big Elvis night, he's pulling out all the stops and the pre-publicity. He knows there won't be too many chances like this. No one would ever know what a close-run thing Alison's lunch was. It's fingers crossed now that no one lets the side down by drinking too much beer. In fact, work on the bypass is already well underway. The arguments over its route are over at last. But its construction is about to spark off a whole new set of arguments between some of the villagers. What's important now is that Dave wins over the goodwill of the villagers. Without that, it could all be a dreadful flop. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I've spoke to... Uh, Alan, and he said it might be all right if I put this poster up about this Elvis show. Hello, yeah. Terry, Hello. how are you? How are you, you all right? Time? What noise are you going to make this time? Oh, it's Elvis. Oh, is it? Oh, oh, it's you know, trip. you look a bit like him. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> they say I look like Tommy Cooper as well. Do they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is only a tribute to him. Yeah, that's right. Where well, can yeah. I stick it in? Uh, you can put it up Don't there. Don't answer that. <laughs> yeah. Up there. Pop it up there. That's all right. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks. Yeah. Initial response from Terry and the shop girls is, well, promising. Oh, you have a good night. See you on Friday then. Yeah. Right. I might pop and have a look. See you again. I can hear the noise from my house. Oh, can you? Yeah. Okay. See you later. It couldn't have gone better. But with her first real test successfully behind her, there comes a phone call that will decide Alison's future. Oh, right. 